good afternoon. Today I'm going to introduce you to the different elements in Core. I'm going to show you how to create requirements. Uh, there's several different ways that you can do this. I'm going to show you how to establish relationships with other elements, requirements being one of those elements. And I'm also going to show you how to view the different elements in various different ways in Core. Uh, and lastly, I'm going to show you how to view the elements in a, the tabular format that I introduced you to in the last video. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So today I'm going to walk you through how to create requirements in Core. And you pretty much create requirements in Core the same way that you would conduct regular requirements analysis without using Core. Uh, that is, the, you know, the first step you begin with the mission needs statement or the mission needs. You conduct user and stakeholder interviews and you, you help refine what those needs are and, and you translate those in terms of capabilities and then you decompose those capability requirements into individual, verifiable, well-written performance requirements if at all possible. Um, as, you, as you perform the requirements analysis piece in core, you simultaneously develop the traceability and the requirements hierarchy. Um, to show you what I'm talking about, let's go ahead and begin with a demonstration. Now what I'm going to do now is go over here on the, on the, on the project pane view right here. We see this huge list of these things that are called elements. And if I click on any one of those things, then the elements pane automatically pops up and the properties dialog box automatically pops up. Since we're talking about requirements analysis, I'm going to go down here to requirement and just click that. And a different set of parameters will pop up over here in the properties dialog pane. So let me tell you a little bit about what elements are in core. Pretty much elements, these are, these are basically the characteristics that help you define your system architecture. And these, these elements, they're linked together through these things called relationships that you'll see down here in the properties pane. So they're linked together using relationships in core. For example, uh, requirements are linked to other requirements and they form a requirements hierarchy. And requirements can also link to functions and components and outside documents and uh, issues and risks and all kinds of other things too. If there's a risk that comes up, it could be the res it could be the cause of that risk could be a badly written requirement, or uh, the mitigation for a risk calls for a new requirement. So the great thing about that is when somebody looks at something like a risk and asks the question, uh, where did this requirement come from, they can look at the traceability developed automatically in core and see that this requirement came from uh, mitigation to a risk. Or the other way around, this risk was caused by a badly written requirement in that case. So there's several different ways to create elements. Uh, requirements is, is one of the kinds of elements, so uh, let me just tell you how to create the different kinds of elements in here, one of them uh, being requirements. So the first one, and this is the one I most often use, is in this elements pane over here. We're just going to right click, and then right here you see new element. Click on that, and then you have that. It says requirement one. I'm going to leave it requirement one just because I'm demonstrating it to you right now. Uh, there's another way that you can create requirements, and that's up here. And I showed this to you in the last video. Create a new element. So I'll just click on that one and it creates another requirement and automatically numbers at 0, 2, which is fine. And now I should mention that that is not numbered in the sense that you number it over here. We'll get to that later, how to actually number requirements. Uh, the other one is the insert key. So on my keyboard, you can't see it, but I'm hitting the insert key. Actually, you have to be in the elements pane. So I clicked in the elements pane. And then you hit insert and there's your new requirement and there's zero. So that's from the insert key. And the other way is go up here to data, and then you go down here to new, and then you go to element right here. And it showed you the insert key too on there on the side. It's the shortcut. So I'll hit that, and we've created requirements in four different ways. Um, so the, those are the different ways to create instances of requirements. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and start to uh, develop a an architecture, requirements architecture. So I'm going to label the first couple ones uh, mission need requirements. So that's the first one and I'm going to label it like that. 
and I'll just call this one REQ.1, like that. And that's just my own preference for numbering these requirements. You probably did that also in your SM3 class. You, you labeled them like that when you had your group project. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call this one my... I'm not going to renumber this one because I'm going to show you how to renumber these without having to go through and number each and every one of them. Actually, I mistyped this one, so I'm just going to go ahead and here and delete that plural off there. So I've got two mission need requirements. These are going to form the basis for all the other requirements. This requirement, so we've conducted our user interviews and we've come up with some capability requirements. So there's our first capability requirement. Okay. This one's going to be our second capability requirement. Now let me stop here and let me just show you how to duplicate an element. If we are, let me go ahead and populate this in here real quick. Now let's say you have other capability requirements that are very similar to this one, but they're not the same as this one. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this one. How you can duplicate these is right click on this one and do duplicate element down here and we're going to call it 02 instead okay in duplicate relationships we don't have relationships established yet but if you did then you can duplicate those as well I'll go ahead and unclick those so I'll go ahead and do that so, and then I'll just change X, Y, and Z to, okay, so now you got three different parameters in there. So now we're, we've got those, let me create a third one actually, three capability requirements. We'll go ahead and duplicate that one and call it 03, and I'll do the same thing with this, we'll do, okay. So we've got our mission need requirements. We've got two of those. It looks a little bit sloppy right now, but trust me, it'll all work out in the end. We've got three capability requirements right here. So now we're going to derive more requirements from our capability requirements. Uh, and so these next few requirements I'm just going to have as uh, performance requirements. Okay, are you back with me? I'm going to create a couple more now. And instead of performance requirements, these are going to be functional requirements. And then I'll go ahead and create a new one and call this one a constraint requirement. The next thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to actually talk to you about the different fields that are in here. You're probably wondering what the heck's going on over here. So what I'm going to do is walk you through. Here's the name, obviously. Now, one, one thing that a lot of students typically confuse the name field with is they put the actual requirement in the name field. And what ends up happening is if it's a long requirement, they take up the entire block right there. And the way it looks in their requirements analysis report is the title of the requirement in the report actually ends up being the the entire requirement written out in the in the title pane so you don't want to do that you want to write the actual requirement down here in the description so uh, yeah, we're describing it in terms of the highest level possible so the system is required for uh, now document